With season two already in full swing, we've got you covered on the inside scoop on all the latest tips and tricks to take your game to the next level. Whether you're looking to dominate the competition in arena or rise to the top of the competitive leaderboards, we've got everything you need to know on how to go pro in season two. Now, let's talk about warming up. Having a consistent warm-up routine in Fortnite is super important to go pro because it helps you create good habits. All of your favorite pros like Booga, Mero, and Peterbot all have a consistent warm-up routine that they do every day before they hop into games to keep them at the top of their game. Now that you know how important warming up is, let's talk about the correct way to warm up efficiently. A good warm up routine usually takes around 30 minutes and it's split into two parts, mechanics and aim. For the first 15 minutes, all you want to do is warm up your mechanics. You can run edit courses, Raiders Peace Control map, or you could just free build in your own island. After you finish warming up your mechanics, it's time to get your aim warmed up. Now, a lot of pros argue that aim is more important than mechanics in Fortnite, so warming up your aim is essential. The best way to warm up your aim before you hop into some real games is with aim duels. In this map, you can hop in with a friend or you can have a random fill join, and you'll be able to choose which gun you want to aim duel with with, whether it's the assault rifle, thunder shotgun, or even an SMG. You can also choose how much health you both have in the duel and whichever type of scenario you want to warm up in. Whether you play on keyboard and mouse or controller, having the most optimal binds and settings for your input is crucial in becoming a pro. First, let's talk about settings. There are some settings that a ton of pros use that you might not be using, and it could be holding you back. The first setting is auto open doors. Very self-explanatory, the setting is just opening the doors for you instead of you having to hit your interact key. Now, this setting isn't a complete game changer, but 99% of pros use this setting just because it saves them a tiny bit of time while looting. The next setting is preferred item slots. Preferred item slots allows you to assign an inventory slot for a weapon or item type. And every time you pick that item up, it goes into its assigned item slot. For example, I have my assault rifle in my first slot and my shotgun in my second slot, so every time I pick up an AR, it goes into the first slot and my shotgun goes into the second slot. Having this setting on is very important in certain situations. For example, let's say you're just getting out of a fight and you're looting your kills and getting pushed by another team right away. Instead of your inventory being messed up because you're looting new guns, they'll go right into the slot that you assigned them and you'll be ready to fight again right away. Lastly, we have auto pickup. Auto pickup essentially picks up items without having to interact with them. This all picks up all materials, gold, and ammo just by walking over them. Now this setting is used by many pros in tournaments to get an advantage in off-spawn fights. If you and your opponent decide to 50-50 the same weapon while landing off-spawn, you'll have the advantage with auto pickup because as soon as you get close to the weapon, it'll pick it up for you. Before we get into binds, let's talk about sensitivity quickly. Picking the perfect sensitivity is all about being comfortable in what works for you. It's all about picking a sensitivity you like and sticking to it. Changing your sensitivity all the time will hurt your muscle memory and make your aim worse. You have to stay on one sensitivity and let your muscle memory build up over time. If you don't know where to start when it comes to sensitivity, look at pro settings like Marrow, Day, or Reed if you're on controller. If you're on keyboard, look at pros such as Booga, Thomas HD, or Peterbot. Now that you know the settings the pros use, let's talk about optimal binds. First, let's talk about controller. 99% of controller pros either use a controller with paddles or they'll play claw grip. This allows them to have the most optimal binds on controller because they can either bind the face buttons to their paddles or they play claw and hit these buttons with their pointer fingers. If you have to take your thumb off of your right stick to press your face buttons to build, jump, or even edit, you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage compared to people who have those binds on paddles. If you're serious about becoming a pro, consider learning to play claw or trying a controller with paddles. Now, if you do decide to switch, don't get discouraged right away because it will take a few weeks to build the muscle memory up and get better. Now let's talk about keyboard and mouse. First off, you wanna have your binds as close to the WASD keys as possible. This is because you're always going to be resting your fingers on WAS as they are your movement keys. So having them close to them means you don't need to move your fingers a long way to press your key binds. If you play keyboard and mouse, having side mouse buttons is critical in having optimal binds. Having mouse buttons free up room on your keyboard for other binds, such as editing or sprinting. Most keyboard pros tend to use two side buttons for building. 
Take Yamzo for example. Let's take a look at his settings together. Yamzo uses two mouse buttons for wall and stair, his floor with Q, cone with V, and edit with F. Now these are very optimal because of how close Q is to Waz. He uses two mouse buttons and the fact he can use his thumb to press V for cone and F for edit, meaning he doesn't ever have to move his pointer finger. Even though we're recommending using some of the same maps to train that you use to warm up with, warming up and training are very different. During training, you're trying to focus on certain things to get better. And while warming up, you're just using the muscle memory you built from training just to get warm. So let's get into training mechanics. Having good mechanics is essential to becoming a pro in Fortnite. Just look at some of these clips from Polarized, who has some of the most insane mechanics in Fortnite. Now, you don't need to have insanely fast mechanics like Polarize to go pro, but you do need to be consistent with your mechanics, meaning you rarely miss edits and fights, and you don't overbuild. So let's go through the proper ways to train your mechanics. Edit courses, piece control maps, and free building are all used to train mechanics. But instead of just going through the motions and running through the maps with no purpose, go through the maps knowing what you want to work on. If you're gonna go through an edit course, work on consistency in your edits. Try to go through the course slowly, but make sure you don't mess up an edit. Once you go through the course consistently a few times, try going through it a bit faster to work on speed. Another great map pro used to work on mechanics is Raider's Peace Control Map. This map has over 25 different peace control scenarios that you often see in game. While going through these scenarios, work on consistent edits just like you were doing in the edit courses. Now, after going through these scenarios over and over, you'll build up muscle memory, and once you find yourself in these specific scenarios in game, you will know exactly what to do. Now that your mechanics are looking like Peter Bots, let's talk about how to get aim like Thomas HD. Like I mentioned before, having good aim comes from sticking to the same sensitivity over a long period of time and not switching off it to create muscle memory. Memory. But you may ask, where does this muscle memory come from? The muscle memory comes from training your aim. Fortnite makes it very easy to train your aim with creative maps. The map a ton of pros use to train their aim in creative is Raider's Aim Training Map. Now this map has 20 advanced aim scenarios that help you improve all aspects of your aim. Now if you're someone who struggles with long range tracking, try a scenario like this. Or if you're someone who struggles with shotgun aim, then try this one. 1v1 aim duels are another great way to train your aim. While you're aim dueling, keep your eyes on your crosshair and make sure you're always trying to line up headshots. Over time, it'll become muscle memory to have your crosshair close to the head. And you'll be hitting headshots like all the pros. Head over to ProGuides.com where you can access all of our courses and bootcamp content for just $7.99. The meta refers to the best strategies and skills used in the game to be at the top level. Understanding the new meta during each new season is crucial to competing at the top level and going pro. With this new chapter, there are tons of new items such as the Kinetic Blade, Havoc Assault Rifle, Havoc Pump Shotgun, Overclocked Pulse Rifle, and even the new best in-slot healing item, the Legendary Slurp Juice. The new Mythic Havoc Pump Shotgun and Overclocked Pulse Rifle are two of the most overpowered guns Fortnite has ever seen. With the Pulse Rifle being able to melt down any opponent for over 200 damage in one second and the mythic pump doing 250 damage headshots. The pulse rifle is only attainable by capturing the flag of the floating island that spawns in the random location during the middle of the match. While the mythic pumps can be obtained by capturing the vault in the brutal bastion, shattered slabs, or mega city. Most pros loadouts this season consist of a havoc pump shotgun because it does the most damage out of the three shotguns in the game, which includes the havoc, the combat shotgun, and the auto shotgun. Along with the Havoc, they run a Twin Mag SMG, two healing items, and the Kinetic Blade. The Kinetic Blade is a new mobility item that has three charges and recharges every 10 seconds. Hop into a game to try out all of these new guns for yourself and get to know the new meta. Now that you know what you need to do to become a pro, let's do a quick recap to make sure you remember every tip and apply everything into your own game. Make sure you have a consistent warm-up routine. You never want to go into a game without warming up first. A good warm-up routine lasts around 30 minutes, with half the time focusing on mechanics and the other on aim. Try out the settings we mentioned earlier that include auto open doors, preferred item slots, and auto pickup. Make sure your settings are optimal. Check out pro settings like Booga, Peterbot, Marrow, and Day. 
today. Train your mechanics with free building, edit courses, and piece control maps. And train your aim with Raider's aim maps. Make sure to stay on the same sensitivity so you can build up muscle memory and have aim like the pros. That just about wraps up the video for today. If you want to see more content on how to improve as a Fortnite player, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And also make sure to stay tuned for more skill improving videos. Whether you play